the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at the Splunk Conference, .conf 2014. Uh, Splunk Conf is the hashtag. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm joined Jeff Kelly, the number one big data analyst uh, in the world with Wikibon. Uh, Jeff, great to see you again. And we're here with Russ Turner with Domino's. Talking about IT ops, uh, engineering manager. Welcome to theCUBE. Hi, thank you. Appreciate you coming on, and uh, we love talking to practitioners and folks in the trenches, uh, really who have to use the tooling. So I got to first ask you, IT ops with data is really a big deal. It is literally on the floor, it's everywhere. Um, how are you guys doing that from a, from a strategy standpoint? Because you know, Splunk is a tool and a platform, and it's always kind of that confusing thing. I mean, how do you view that whole data with the Splunk integration? Is it a tool, is it a platform? How are you guys using it? Uh, we brought it in originally as a tool, um, and it was for what you would do is just traditional uh, system monitoring uh, for servers and things like that, making sure that uh, things were running the way we expected to. My, my team is responsible for deployments and things like that, but also the uptime of the site, which is critical to us. Um, about 45% of our business goes through the, our online channels right now. And so keeping that up 100% of the time obviously is the key. So we brought it in mainly for system monitoring and, uh, but what we're starting to see is that on top of the system monitoring, there's other data insights that we can pull. It's the same things that we're feeding our data warehouse, um, but whereas the data warehouse could take 12 or 24 hours to roll some of that important data up, we see it in real time, so. So that lag is critical. I mean, that's still not a bad kind of performance <laughs> from the old, the old school de, you know, right. standards. I mean, it used to be you throw it out there and the answer comes back maybe you know, weeks later. But let's talk about the, this modern era. What's, what do you learn in your environment dealing with how to have a real-time database, how to have a real-time system that's not traditionally looked at in the old days like that. So this whole new way that, that, that this data model, it's fast data, it's big data, it's small data. What's the architecture look like? How do you guys lay it out and what's your vision? Uh, well, right now we're still trying to find our way. Like I said, the, what we're discovering is, is there's more, like we've got this giant, it's a gold mine of data that we can quickly tap into. So we can do, we can create reports quite quickly. Um, and that's what we need. So, for an example, all of our, uh, like all of our coupons or all of our promotions are tied to a code. And so now we could quickly find out if 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 that, or we could potentially find out if that was performing as we are. We're not agile enough right now to make a, a change on the site if it's not going the way we think. And really, we haven't really approached marketing with a full-blown use case. Or here's some of the cool things we could do with it. But what we, uh, another example is we just recently, I, actually I think it was released today, the, the press release for it is um, Dom is our voice ordering for our mobile platform. And what that let us do for the last couple of, of months is we've had it available, um, but we didn't announce it. So it was interesting to see how many people were using it and then also it allows us to see, since there was such a small amount of people using it, we could see voice ordering versus the traditional mobile ordering. If, if voice ordering people were abandoning me more often, or things like that, it wouldn't, so many people, or it was so little used at first that it wouldn't have showed a, a bump in errors, but now we can define, we can break that into to pieces, so just look at voice order compared to mobile, compared to the, the overall order, so. So I wonder, so let's just take a step back. So that's a really interesting use case. Um, in fact, I, I caught that commercial on TV today for the new application, and I noticed Domino's is doing some things with the, in the mobile channel, certainly yep. to uh, better reach customers. And we heard in uh, the keynote this morning from Godfrey, Godfrey Sullivan around, he's hearing from, from there, from Splunk customers, that they're going mobile first. And yep. I think Domino's would fall into that, into that trend. Um, talk a little bit about the mobile, the value of mobile, not just in terms of reaching customers, but what it provides in terms of data coming back, in terms of all the, what your customers are doing, how they're, um, how they're behaving and how, how that's being leveraged hopefully to improve your business. Within, so the mobile customer itself, which we're um, finding out that of that 45%, a significant, I can't 
say the number off the top of my head. What a significant that is mobile, and and we're making an investment in mobile too. If, like you've seen the, we just recently released the iPad, and that's Retina and and things like that. So what that allows you to do is is see a really rich, you know, pizza or something like that that drives upsell and things like that. So then, what we can do is now we give it gives us a chance to compare platform to platform or platform versus the website or we've also got you can use you know your browser on the on the platform to hit we just went responsive so we could do responsive versus um, mobile and things like that and it will allow us to do the data the data insights team can pull that from the data warehouse but if they need to see it real time we can give them well X amount of orders in the last hour have been mobile versus responsive and so that part of it's neat. But like I said, we're still growing and, and, and kind of feeling our way out, and I, we still need to build a solid case mm -hmm. to, to show them you know, some of the other cool things that we could do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what it does do is it demonstrates that Domino's is clearly looking to leverage data as a, as a competitive uh, asset. A absolutely. Well, I think one of the coolest things, and it puts a lot of pressure on, on my team and I, but it's exciting, is our CEO, um, Patrick Doyle, has come out on multiple shows lately and said, don't think of Domino's as a pizza company more. Think of us as an e-commerce company that sells pizza. So he sees technology as a, a tool to leverage to get a competitive advantage. So to me, that's very exciting and it's a cool space to be in. Um, and some of the things, like being able to see this data uh, is going to allow us, as we roll out more new features and more uh, new partnerships with other, other companies that we'll be able to, to, to see that, the fruits of that in real time mm -hmm. and that, that part of it's. And just elaborate a little bit on, on the importance of that uh, executive buy-in in terms of establishing a culture where we are going to base our decision making on data-driven insights. Yeah. How important is that coming from the top versus um, kind of taking it from the bottoms up approach where you're bringing in technology but not necessarily getting the buy-in because, or, or, or the adoption because you don't necessarily have a mandate from the top. It makes it, to me, tremendously easier because you're, we're not building a case scenario, like we're not fighting a, an upstream battle. Like he is excited, you know, the leadership's excited. They, they, you know, like the technology, they like what our development team's doing. Um, marketing has got amazing ideas that we can't go fast enough for them. So, um, for the marketing and those guys to, to be able to see us as, as a, a, an advantage, is, it makes it easier on us. Like I've been at other jobs where you were building a case scenario and you're fighting the whole entire way to try to, to implement something where now marketing's like, you know, we want to do all the stuff, you guys got to get cracking. So um, it's, it's definitely a, a lot easier having everyone buy in. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't burn a lot of cycles arguing for or trying to prove something where everyone is, is fully aligned and, and wants to go forward with some you know exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Splunk a little bit more specifically. So you mentioned you're, you're using Splunk to kind of get a real-time view in your, into your operational systems. Yep. Put it into context, where does that fit into your larger um, technology infrastructure related to data? Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're using more traditional data warehousing, or yes. you're using some other systems to yep. do So we have a traditional be. data warehouse right now, um, and then, so our, our store side of it, so all the stores are being monitored. We use certain for Splunk for application monitoring, for logging and things like that. That's a separate team. They do it. They do some for security monitoring also. And then my side, the the e-commerce side, we, we, that's where we originally brought it in for. The first time we brought it in for is because we wanted to. We jammed it in place uh, before the 2011 Super Bowl, I think, um, because we wanted to see. You know, we were cared about system performance during that time. We wanted to see what it, it did. The Super Bowl is interesting where. Um, we have had busier days, but it happens as the time zone goes along. Super Bowl is fascinating where it happens all. Kickoff is at one time, regardless of time zone. So we wanted just that, the, the machine, the, you know, how our, our stuff's performing during this, this one time a year occurrence. But then once we got it in and we started seeing other things that we could correlate and, and uh, you know, there are other opportunities there for all this data that we had. Um, it was interesting too that we could bring in other people to look at it and they think of, the, out, like they're what they, a different set of eye or a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So there's there's stuff that we didn't even think of that people have said, can you do this? And we're looking at, oh yeah, we can. So mm -hmm. it's 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 been tremendously beneficial, and it keeps paying. Like we're I bet we're just scratching the surface of mm -hmm. what we can do with it. 
Uh, and, well, and it's interesting because it, the, what you're describing is essentially bringing in something like Splunk, where you're able to get some of the insights that you're looking for, but also it, it opens up all new possibilities that you yes. didn't think of ahead of time. And that's one of the real benefits we're seeing from these more modern approaches to data. Yes. So now, meanwhile, you've got the data flowing. You're, you're kind of tapping that stream that's flowing in your enterprise data warehouse. Um, so I'm curious, how, do you, how, how does your organization see the enterprise data warehouse? Is that a technology that's, uh, that's, that's going away? Is it playing a less important role? No. What, I, how, do you see it, how do you see the relationship between some of these new approaches and, and kind of the more traditional EDW model? So right now, the, the data that we're getting is very, uh, it's, I don't want to say unscrubbed, but when it gets to the data warehouse, there's times like if you change your order, if you cancel your order, things like that, we don't see that, like we're not counting that. I only keep three months worth of data, so any type of real, um, if you wanted to go back and do real, you know, long trends, things like that, I, that's not a business that I'm in. So to me, I think, I think data warehouse and us hand in hand is more important than, I, I can't ever imagine a time where data warehouse wouldn't be available. Our data warehouse team is phenomenal, and, and to, to me, marrying us and them is, is what would be, that, that's how, and then, you know, giving all that data, giving marketing opportunities to see real time or, you know, all that, to me that's, that's what, that's important, that's going to be the key. Mm -hmm. Russ, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We got one question though, we have some journalists out there and I'm getting some pings on our CrowdChat uh, uh, engagement app. Uh, he says, for you, okay. uh, in DevOps and reliability, have you been able to leverage the real time monitoring to aid in addressing root causes of issues or failures, and how have you used monitoring and historical data to understand system performance? Any examples? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. We use it that because of, like I said, the real-time portion of it is so critical. We use it for um, an example would be we're, we're on the site. We're constantly running A/B tests um, between you know two different things. We had an A/B test that was it was a, a very small percentage of the user base. Um, and it, it was, re, it, their code was getting returned incorrectly, payment type was wrong, things like that. So what that allowed us to do is um, quickly identify it before, because it was, order still went through, but um, it was still. You can see some patterns. Yes, it, it gave us, and we were able to see it quickly and then stop the, the test quite quickly. Um, but it, it's the same, we can start to see it like I can see the, what because of where we're at in the network, I can also see um, the order flow from the customer all the way down to the store and back. So what that means is if we had a, a VPN problem where a bunch of stores dropped off the network, well typically my team will see that first and we'll mark those stores down and they'll see it as a, a, maybe a drop in online ordering. But really it's that a whole VPN. Yeah, you get so, telemetry on yes, real customer data. Yes. And the consequences of not having real time is it, you miss it. Yes. And, and this, is, this is the issue that I love about big data, is you can use the pattern recognition to yep. see real, real issues, and the consequences are, are impact to sales. So what, right now, we don't, we're not pulling in VMware data, we're not pulling in and some of that other type of data too, but, but if, it, if we can start pulling that data, then, then we can see patterns go the whole entire way. Like if there's a VMware problem, we can track that through and see eventually, you know, uh, if it shows up in or account, if there's an or account hit at all. So it's 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 fascinating. I mean, the, like I said, the amount of things, everyone there's open-minded, so we're allowed to, we can bring in that data, it's just awesome. finding the time to, to do right. it. All right, Russ, thanks for coming on theCUBE, oh. we really appreciate it. Uh, we are live in Las Vegas, uh, Russ Turner with Domino's, really using big data to operationalize, <laughs> get some efficiency going, but also identify opportunities to add value to the business. Uh, great success story, great to have folks in the trenches on theCUBE. We love talking to customers, it's our favorite thing to do. Uh, but we're going to talk to some of the senior executives at Splunk as well, and find out what's going on with the product. We'll be right back after this short break.